We come and gather round, grab some coffee and sit down. It's time to join together, praise our Lord. We've got every kind of face. Come on in and find a place here at Top Hand Cowboy Church. We'll come and gather round, grab some coffee and sit down. It's time to join together and praise our Lord. We've got every kind of face. Come on in and find a place here at Top Hand Cowboy Church. Yeah, here at Top Hand Cowboy Church. That would be. Everybody good? <laughs> All right. What are we doing? Where, where are we at? Okay. Whew. That tickled my ear. Um, well, it, good morning. Good to see y'all this morning. Uh, we've got a testimony that we're going to start off with this morning. But uh, before we do that, a few announcements. Um, we're having our Christmas blessing uh, during our Christmas Eve service. So we are blessed to be a blessing. We're asking that you pray and ask God to lead you in giving above and beyond uh, this Christmas Eve service to help uh, Top Hand meet the needs of the ministry. Uh, so that's the first thing to put on the calendar. Also, I, I announced last week, uh, we're doing a monthly newsletter, and we're trying to do it mostly by email. And so if you want to receive that uh, monthly newsletter, just telling you what's going on, one thing that I know is going to be in there is um, I'm going to try and have the music that we're doing for that month uh, and who it's by in that newsletter so y'all will know what's coming and, and can look up those songs if you want to um, and, and kind of be... Uh, be listening to them before before service that week. Um, but anyways, if you want to do that, you need to email Glenda at tophandcowboychurch.org, and she'll put you on the email list so you can receive that. And then finally, the uh, the family fun day down at the arena is December 6th, right after church. Uh, kids are going to make sti uh, stick horse races, and then we're going to have a stick horse race in the arena uh, and, and have a good time just, just fellowshipping. So if you want to be a part of that, put that on the calendar, December 6th. Uh, right after church. So, uh, Billy and Brittany, come on down. Where am I supposed to stand? Hey, you come, come right down here. Stand on that, that tape right there. See the tape? Well, I wanted some bright lights so I couldn't see. Okay, so um, I brought notes. Closer. Closer. Okay, I brought notes because I'm from Louisiana and I like to ramble. I didn't so, know folks from Louisiana could read. <laughs> okay, so obviously Greg has Louisiana jokes and now Rob has Louisiana jokes, so thanks. If they're cracking jokes about Louisiana, it's probably about me. So, here we go. I'm going to get into this. I am nervous because I'm not a public speaker, and I'm probably going to say that again in here because it's in my notes. So, but just bear with us. And Billy's the silent partner. He's here for moral support, right? Hey, Billy. Can you at least tell him your name? <laughs> Hi. Okay. <laughs> I'm the talker. He is not. <clears throat> Good morning. Okay. So many of you may know us. Many of you don't. But we are the Banks family. Brittany and Billy. We have two beautiful little girls, which are in Cal Kids this morning. Thank you. Um, because otherwise, if they were up here, we wouldn't be able to do this. <clears throat> but we're very blessed with our two wonderful girls. And we have been attending Top Hand for 10 to 11 years or so. Time flies when you're having fun. So we really don't know the exact time, but we know it's been 10, 10 years at least. Um, I'm the Cal Kids director, and I work alongside Miss Gloria. And I'm also the director of our new um, Parents' Day Out program, which is going amazing. Um, we also have <coughs> Barn Fellowship on Monday nights. Billy leads that. I just do a lot of talking to you. So, uh, <coughs> when Ronnie called me about possibly doing a testimony on stewardship, I was automatically wanted to say no due to fear because this is a big group of people and I'm not a public speaker. I'll talk your head off in the back, but don't put me up here. I'm going to cut it short, get it done, be done with it. Um, but I put fear aside and knew that 
God called us to this for a reason. Um, he doesn't equip, wait, he doesn't call the equip, he equips the called is what I was told this week. So I was really calm, collect, like cool, calm, collective all week. And then we pulled into the parking lot and I'm putting on lavender oil and I'm like, okay, Jesus, we're gonna do this. <laughs> so if you smell lavender really strong, it's probably me. Um, but I'm gonna go into our childhood, my childhood. I was raised going to church. Um, Billy wasn't necessarily raised in church, but his parents were always believers. Uh, I just know that I remember being a child that I knew about tithing, but I, and I kind of knew the importance of it because I remember my mom and dad, they always gave faithfully to church. There was times that they couldn't give, but they always did because God gave first. They would give their tithe, many times wondering how they were going to pay a bill or buy groceries, but God always came first and God always provided. I remember several times when my mom would cry and pray out to the Lord, and then a check or a bonus would come through dad's work, and that was God's way of providing for the family. Um, I recall Matthew 6, chapter 6, verse 25 through 26. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what will you wear? Is not life more than food, or the body more than clothes? Look at the birds in the air. They do not sow or reap or store away, and barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. This passage has always gave my family peace and hope in knowing that God would always provide. <clears throat> and I still cling to that verse this day. So fast forward to adulthood. When Billy and I first started to attend Top Hand, we would give a little bit here and there. Deep down, I knew we needed to give more, but that was a lot of money that we could use to eat out, hang out with friends, you know, buy junk. About six months after attending Top Hand, we started going to Spiegelville Barn Fellowship. Tithing was talked more in depth, and the weight set in, and we started to give more and faithfully. Um, fast forward a few more years, we had credit card debt, because I mean, when you're young, even older, you, you get debt. Um, so we had credit card debt, and we just knew that we needed to pay it down. So we started to pay down our debt, and we created a budget, and God was put first. We began to pay down our debt and saw how much we were throwing away. Little did we know, with us starting a budget, God was preparing us to purchase our future home, which was one driveway over. Had we not learned about tithing and being a good steward of God's money, um, which he gave us, we wouldn't have been able to purchase the home. Because we became good stewards and were managing God's money the way he was intended for it to be used, he blessed us with our forever home. Once the mortgage started to be paid, we had that moment of, wow, that's a lot to be giving back. We could use that money to help pay for the mortgage, but we didn't. I kept reminding myself, this is God's gift to you. He has blessed your family with jobs to pay for these things. Without him, you wouldn't have this. The least you could do is be sure to give him his part back. So I always remind myself, it's not ours, it's his. He gave it to us, he can take it away. He has called us to be a good steward and take care of it for him and that's what we will do. The Bible also speaks of other ways to be a good steward of your time, and that's another important, important area is serving. God's ministry is constantly growing, and it needs help to do so. So I guess in closing, just remember that God, thank God for your blessings, for all that he has given you, and remember he will provide and take care of you and your family. Give him a giving, Give with a giving and humble heart. God thanks you for being obedient and doing his will. Your life is alone from Christ. He has given you a life to steward for his glory and your good. Um, and then going with COVID, I know that um, there's been people that have lost their jobs. Um, still the uncertainty of you know, not having a job and things like that. And it's easy to, to hold on to it, and we're guilty of that too because and this is another testimony for another time, but being business owners, you know, times get tough and times get questionable, especially in the past, the past year has been questionable. So there has been times, I mean, we have failed, um, but we, we keep on keeping on and we get back on track because again, God, God gave it to us and God can take it away. Um, so even with the certainty of the future and what's going on, you want to hold on to it, but just remember to give him his part back because he'll bless it abundantly and he's going to take care of you. So give it, even if you're worrying where your next meal is going to come when you give that tithe, 
your percentage, just know that he's going to bless it a hundred times fold. You're going to be taken care of. There's going to be food on your table. Your bills are going to be paid. You're going to have clothes on your back. So that's all I have to say. That's good. That's a great word. That's a great word. If you're new here, we don't, we don't take up an offering. We don't pass a plate or anything. Uh, we've got a Dutch oven in the back that uh, if you want to bring your tithes and offerings, you can put them in there. You can give online through our website. But uh, thanks, thank, thank you, uh, Brittany and Billy, for standing up here before us today and sharing what God's done. Let's, uh, let's stand and thank, thank God for his blessings today. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for who you are. God, we thank you that you are the provider. God, most importantly, you provided your son as a sacrifice, God, to redeem the lost. And Lord, we thank you for your grace and mercy towards us. God, we thank you that you will take care of us, that you walk with us, that you never forsake us. Lord, join us in this time. God, fill, us, fill this place with your spirit as we sing praises about your power and glory this morning. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Since when has impossible he ever stopped you? Friday's disappointment is Sunday's empty tomb. But since when has impossible he ever stopped you? This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise, make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Pentecostal fire, stirring something new. And you're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon. Resurrection power runs in my veins too. And I believe there's another miracle here in this room. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Yeah. Open the grave, I'm coming out I'm gonna live, gonna live again This is the sound of dry bones rattling My God is able to save and deliver and heal and restore anything that he wants to. And just as the man who was thrown on the bones of Elijah, if there's anything that he can do, just as the stone that was rolled at the tomb in the garden, what happens when God says to move? Well, I feel Him moving it now. I feel Him doing it now. I feel Him doing it now. Do it now. Do it now. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise, make a dead man walk again. We'll open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling.
The head that once was crowned with thorns Is crowned with glory now The Savior knelt to wash our feet Now at His feet we bow The one who wore our sin and shame And now robed in majesty The radiance of perfect love And now shines for all to see Sing your name Your name your name is victory all praise will rise to christ our king your name your name is victory all praise will rise to christ our king To Christ our King, your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King, your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King, your name. Your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. And by your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrecting me in your name i come alive to declare your victory the resurrected king is resurrecting me by your spirit i will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrecting me in your name i come alive to declare your victory the resurrected king is resurrecting me the resurrected king is resurrecting me The tomb where soldiers watched in vain Was borrowed for three days His body there would not remain Our God has robbed the grave Our God has robbed the grave All praise will rise to Christ our King. 
your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. And by your Spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. By your Spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains lose all their guilty stains lose all their guilty stains and sinners plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains Thy precious blood 
shall never lose its power till all the ransom church of God be saved to sin no more y'all rejoice with us be saved to sin I saw the stream, thy flowing womb supply, redeeming love has been my theme, and shall silent in the grave then in a nobler sweeter song I'll sing thy power to Psalm 86, hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, Lord, for I put my trust in you. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my call for mercy. When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, Lord. No deed can compare with yours. All the nations have made, you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great and do marvelous deeds. 
You alone are God. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, Lord, my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the depths, from the realm of the dead. Arrogant foes are attacking me, O God. Ruthless people are trying to kill me. They have no regard for you. But you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. I choose to worship. I choose to bow. Though there's pain in the offering, I lay it down. Here in the conflict, when doubt surrounds. Though my soul is unraveling, I lay it down. you through the fire through the storm and through the flood there is nothing that could ever steal my song in the valley you are worthy you are good when life is not and you will always and forever be my song Well, I build my altar right here and now. In the midst of the darkest night, it won't burn out. For you are perfect, no matter what. In the joy and the suffering, I sing it loud. Sing, I will praise you. So I will praise you through the fire, through the storm, and through the flood. There is nothing that could ever steal my song. In the valley, you are worthy. You are good when life is not. And you will always and forever be my song. When the enemy says I'm done I lift my praises when my world comes crashing down I lift my praises high till the darkness turns to dawn I lift my praises as I choose to worship I choose you now when the enemy says I'm done, I lift my praises. When my world comes crashing down, I lift my praises high. Till the darkness turns to dawn, I lift my praises. And I choose to worship, I choose you now. And I will praise you through the fire. Through the storm and through the flood There is nothing that could ever steal my song In the valley you are worthy You are good when life is not And you will always and forever be my song So when the enemy says I'm done I live my praises and when my world comes crashing down, I lift my praises high. Till the darkness turns to dawn, I lift my praises. I choose to worship. I choose you now. I choose to worship. I choose you now.
I choose to worship, I choose to bow. Though there's pain in the offering, I lay it down. Here in the conflict, where doubt surrounds, Though my soul is unraveling, I choose you now. Amen. Y'all pray with me. God, we thank you. God, that we can worship you. God, that we can sing praises to you in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the flood. God, and know that you will not leave. God, you are walking with us through it all. God, I pray for the hearts right now. God, who, who walk in disappointed discouraged, God, anxious. Lord, would you, would you bring your peace, God? May we worship you in the storm. Lord, we thank you for your many blessings. God, we thank you now, God, as we open your word together. Would you just speak powerfully through Greg? In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Y'all can have a seat. As we uh, look forward to Thanksgiving this Thursday, it is this Thursday, right? Y'all been to the grocery store yet? Lucky you. It is crazy out there, is it not? Amongst all the other craziness that's going on this year. And I want us to uh, continue to think about what this series means, giving thanks. So this morning you're going to get to help the reading of God's Word. Uh, some of you have maybe come from a tradition where this is done often. I honestly don't remember the last time that we did this, but we have done it at top hand before. But we're going to read Psalm 136. This is a call and response. How many of you have done that before in a church before? All right, so I'm expecting y'all to, to really help out here, okay? Because we're going to read together. Uh, I think Tommy's got it set up to where we're going to be able uh, to do this even if you don't have your Bible in hand. His love endures forever. That's the title of this message. And, and giving thanks, I want us to remember that his love endures forever. Casey called me, uh, made a run to Teskey's and uh, we were coming back. And Casey called and uh, said, what are we doing tonight? What are you doing? And uh, I knew that was the setup, right? It's like, it's like I want to do something, but maybe I need to hear what you want to do first. And I said, nothing. She said, well, I came across this, this thing on Netflix that I want us to watch. And I'm like, yeah, boy. All right. So I'm like, well, I sure love my wife and she's sure good to me. So she said there's six episodes, so I'm going to just get in there and get at least through the first one and then tell her I need to get out to the barn or something. So, so we eat, and she fixes our meal, and we sit down, and she turns it on. And it's called Voices of Fire. And I really would encourage you, if you have Netflix, it's uh, something that's going to bless you in a powerful way. And I wasn't expecting it to be what it actually was to me. And uh, it's putting a choir together, and I'm not going to tell you much more about it. It's gospel music, uh, but it's powerful. And there was a lady on there that sang, Jesus loves me. And of course, as my wife sat next to me and tears were running down my face, on the show, the lady asked, why the tears? And she said simply these three words, Jesus loves me. So when we close the end of the service and people think we sing a silly child song, don't you ever forget that Jesus loves you. No matter where you've been last night, no matter how much debt you're in, no matter how good your day has been, no matter 
the concerns that you have. Jesus loves you. So I challenge you when you're stuffed with turkey this Thursday, instead of watching a stupid football game, watch this program. And I believe that you'll be blessed in a very powerful way. So his love endures forever. So Jesus loves me. His love endures forever. Psalm 136. Let's give this a try. We haven't done it in a while. I'm going to read the first part. And then you read the second part of each verse. Let's see how this goes. Psalms 136. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Give thanks to the God of gods. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. To him who alone does great wonders. Who by his understanding made the heavens. Who spread out the earth upon the waters. Who made the great lights. The sun to govern the day. The moon and the stars to govern the night. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt. And brought Israel out from among them. With a mighty hand and an outreached arm. To him who divided the Red Sea asunder and brought Israel through the midst of it, but swept Pharaoh and the army into the Red Sea. To him who led his people through the wilderness. To him who struck down the great kings and killed mighty kings. Shion, king of the Amorites, and Og, king of Bashan, and gave their land as an inheritance, an inheritance to his servant Israel. He remembered us in our low estate, and he freed us from our enemies. He gives food to every creature. Give thanks to the God of heaven. You're going to go to bed tonight. In your head, you're going to be saying, His love endures forever. You know, there's a powerful reason that that is in this psalm. This actually is an ancient song. And no, I was not going to try to sing or ask you to sing. But you could imagine these words being sung. This chorus, this reminder that his love endures forever. So for all of those that love hymn music and you don't like the contemporary music that just repeats over and over and over, uh uh-oh, you better go back to Psalms, amen? That repeated over and over. Why do we repeat things? Why do we sing Jesus loves me at the end of every service? Because I want you to remember, if you don't remember anything that happens every time we gather, that as you leave, as you go to work, as you're disciplining your children, as you are trying to recover from a certain disagreement with your spouse, as life takes place day by day, we need to be reminded That Jesus loves us. This psalm reminds us that his love, God's love, endures forever. And we're going to see how it touches from creation all the way to this day for you and I. Forever, verses 1 through 3 here. I know you are like, man, this, this goes on forever. And I thought the same thing. And I thought, Lord... Will Top Hand really be able to pull this off? Can they just say his love endures forever over and over and over again? The psalmist thought so. So I thought, well, if it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for us. Amen? 
Look at what the first three verses say. It says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. See, I want us to to understand this Hebrew word hesed. It's a covenant love. It's it's a different love of, I'll ask the men this, because I know women hear that word differently. Now men, sit up in your seats, be honest with yourself. How many times have you said, I love you too, back, and you knew that you could just say it and kind of get on with, with, with the day, right? Come on, guys, don't leave me hanging up here on the stage, right? Now, man, you know your wife will say, I love you, babe, and you say, I love you too. It's kind of like some of y'all did with this response, right? You're like, uh, Okay, Brother Greg, I'm going to go along to get along. I'm just, I'm going to say it because you asked me to say it. See, there's a difference when you understand when we sing at the end of the service, Jesus loves me. That's a declaration. I, I love declarations. If you've ever received a text message from me, if you've ever sent, received an email from me, you know that I love exclamation marks. I don't believe in periods. I believe in saying it and saying it loudly and saying it boldly and that thanks, exclamation point. Have a great day, exclamation point. His love endures forever, exclamation point. Jesus loves me, exclamation point. I talk to myself a lot. <laughs> Was that for me or for you? So... Well, I want you to realize that there is a reason in this passage that this song was wrote and that we are to understand that his love endures forever. We need to remember that when our feet are struggling to get on the floor first thing in the morning, his love endures forever. Lord, I need your help today. When we have to have a difficult conversation with a, with a co-worker, when we have to even have a difficult conversation with our spouse, we need to say to ourselves, God, you're going to see us through this. Your love endures forever. You sent your son Jesus to die on the cross, to live a sinless life, to rise again on the third day, just the way that he said he would. He's sitting at your right hand. Lord, you love me that much. You love the world that much that you're going to see me through whatever's about to take place. Amen? It's a declaration. We give thanks because he loves us, because he loved us first. And because of that love, he gave us his son. Verses 4 through 9 here, it says, To him who alone does great wonders, who by his understanding made the heavens, his love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters, his love endures forever. Who made the great lights, his love endures forever. The sun to govern the day, and the moon and the stars to govern the night. His love endures forever. When's the last time that you gave thanks for creation? Now I know we have some deer hunters and duck hunters that will be watching this later today. And right now they're giving thanks for God's creation because they're sitting in a duck blind or a deer blind right now. When's the last time that you saw a beautiful sunrise or a beautiful sunset and you said, Thank you God. Thank you, God. I love when y'all capture a beautiful sunset and you post it on social media and it makes you want to go outside and see for yourself, does it not? When somebody does that, the moon has been just beautiful at different times this year. It's lit up the sky. The, the stars are so... If you live in the country... Now, when you live in the city, it's really tough because people got lights on all over the place. So I want to encourage you to take up Casey's favorite thing to do and go back road. Now, some of y'all grew up back roading, but we don't do what y'all did back road. <laughs> we just like to drive the back roads of Bosque County. And as it gets later at night and the, the boot comes out and the stars are out and we're driving, it's just a beautiful, peaceful thing that the God of all creation thought so much to bless us every 24 hours 
with the sun and the moon and the stars. If you wonder what you can give thanks for this Christmas, this Thanksgiving season, you can give thanks for creation. Amen? His love endures forever. Thank God for the beginning of creation because he knew that you would be here today. Verses 10 through 15 says, To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt and brought Israel from among them with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, to him who divided the Red Sea asunder and brought Israel through the midst of it, but swept Pharaoh and his army into the sea. Have you thanked God for the deliverance that he's brought in your life? Now, I'm a firm believer that there's no such thing as a coincidence. I believe it's God at work. You ever been late to go to work and you pull up and there's an accident in front of you? You ever paused and not been able to do something that you were really set on doing and then later discover that it was canceled or that something else happened and God was watching over you? Have you ever seen God bring you and deliver you from your sin? Have you seen God deliver a nation from itself? You and I need to be praying that God would deliver this nation. And he'll only do that one heart at a time. So as you and I give thanks and honor God for delivering us, can you imagine... All right, here we are. We're at the sea. You got, you got an army chasing you. Now you talk about praying. You, t you talk about, Lord, we really kind of need you to show up. He parts the Red Sea and they go across on dry land. How long does it take dry land to dry up when it's been saturated? Days, weeks. We got a little, for those of y'all that aren't from Texas that call these things ponds, we have a pond. Those of us from Texas, we know that we have a little tank at our house. So it, it's just, uh, it, it dries up. It, it doesn't really hold water. It depends on the, the rain level that we get. It is gorgeous when we get a good rain because it's nice to look out there. But over about a two-week period, it begins to dry up. I couldn't immediately just go out there and walk across it because I'm going to sink in it. I want you to think about being a follower of God, being a believer, being, being a child of the king, being there as the army is pressing in and God parts the Red Sea and you walk across dry land. I know what you're thinking. You want me to get to the part where you look back, don't you? Yeah, you look back and here comes the army. And what does God do? He brings and rolls the water and delivers them. What's your deliverance story? Where has God parted waters for you and delivered you from that demon, that sin, that situation that you needed to be delivered from? Have you given thanks for that? See, that, that's what it means to, to build an Ebenezer. It means to mark this place. Put those rocks there. So that every time you go by that place, and others go by that place, that place is marked where you know that God worked in your life. If you've been a believer for a year, or five, or twenty, or fifty you ought to know where there's some Ebenezer's in your journey. Where you can mark where God worked in your life. Because he's delivered us. And he's delivered us from sin. Amen? It says this in verse 16. And I think this is so important. To him who led his people through the wilderness. Now I know immediately you're thinking, well yeah, there, there were the children of Israel going through the wilderness. How many of us have gone through a wilderness? When our hearts have wandered from God. Some of us can't sit through a whole sermon without our thoughts wandering somewhere else. How about when we 
ran from a situation that we knew we should have taken a stand on. His love endures forever. Jesus loves me. This I know. Why? Because even when you and I wander, his love does not. His love does not wander from us. We wander from his love. But even when you and I are in the wilderness, God loves us the same. It's not on whether he feels like it or not. He always feels like loving his creation. And you and I were created in his image. When we go places we shouldn't, his love endures forever. How many of you have ever been in a place where you thought, you know what, it's time to go ahead and leave right now. And you're thankful you left right then. Because as you're driving away, red and blue lights are heading to that location. Some of y'all don't have that testimony in your walk with the Lord. Others of you do. You know that you wandered into a place that you should have never been, but God was watching over you, and he delivered you. We need to give thanks this Christmas. I'm ready for Christmas, people. <laughs> this Thanksgiving season, we need to make sure that we're saying, Lord, thank you when I wandered from you. When I knew that what I was doing was not pleasing to you, your love endured forever. Verses 17 through 22 here. To him who struck down the great kings and the mighty kings, Sheon king of the Amorites and Og king of Bashan, and gave their land as an inheritance, an inheritance to his servant Israel. See, people are mean. It's in our sinful nature. And I'm so glad that I did not grow up in a time of social media where people could immediately, as I'm sitting in my own bedroom, attack me. See, many of us adults, we don't realize what some of our children grow, go through. You say, well, my child doesn't have social media. Well, they have a playground. And they have times that they're alone with other kids. And kids can just be mean to each other. Amen? Adults can do the same thing. See, his love endures forever. And remember, what somebody says to you and about you does not make it true. What God says about you is true. His love endures forever. No matter where we wander, no matter what we're doing, no matter what's going on, he loves you because he gave his son for you. This morning, maybe you are feeling attacked. And maybe you need to say, Lord, I'm trusting in your love. I'm trusting in your word that what others are saying and doing in my life is not who I am. I am your child, God. I'm declaring that, that by faith, your love covers a multitude of sins. The sins of others, and even my sin. So Father, I'm accepting your love today. And I'm giving thanks for that love that you've placed in my life. The last section here, to give thanks, simply means this. Verse 23 and tw through 26. He remembered us in our low estate. He freed us from our enemies. He gives food to every creature. Give thanks to the God of heaven. As this call and response comes to an end, it goes back to talking about creation and talking about taking care of the creatures and talking about taking care of us in our low estate. What, what's our low estate? When we're at our worst, that's right. When we're at rock bottom, anybody been on rock bottom? Aren't you glad you're no longer there? See, the way that you get out of rock bottom is you trust Jesus. 
You can't claw your way out of rock bottom. You can't fight your way out of rock bottom. As sinful people, that is rock bottom. But Jesus, our hope and our salvation, we give thanks for. I want to encourage you, maybe this Thanksgiving, as you gather with your family, do something different. I know what's going to happen at my house. We're all going to sit down. Everybody's going to be ready to eat. And all eyes are going to come and look at me and say, well, you're the preacher. I may just surprise them this year. What will you do when you sit down to have that Thanksgiving meal? Will you give thanks? Will you stand up when everybody's seated and say, His love endures forever. Let's give thanks. I want to encourage you right now where you are. Do you accept and understand that His love comes through Jesus Christ? And it's only through Jesus Christ that you would even understand that his love endures forever. Because his son lives forever and is with him right now. But gave his life that you and I might have life in him. This morning as I close, I want to remind you that what it means to say hallelujah is a praise. See, we've been places, some of us, where we've Heard somebody holler out, Hallelujah! What's that mean? Praise God. Maybe you just need to stand up right when everybody's getting all quiet and grabbing hands at, the, at your table. Just stand up and shout, Hallelujah. You better tell them Brother Greg said you could do that or you might get something thrown at you. But see, I, I think sometimes when people shout out hallelujah, they're trying to rattle the bones of the people that are there to say, praise God, His love endures forever. This morning my prayer would be as you gather and you travel this week that you would think about what does it mean to have hallelujah in you? And what does it mean to share that with those around you? To give thanks this week, I pray that you would find a way to do it different. I pray that maybe this year, 2020, as we all have a lot to say about it, that maybe this Thanksgiving would be remembered differently because of the way that we give thanks. Amen? Let's stand. I want to pray for us this morning. Father, I can only think of shouts of hallelujah as angels gather around your throne. And Father, we praise your name. Lord, I'm reminded of the sweet song to count your many blessings, name them one by one. Father, I pray that we would do that this Thanksgiving. Lord, I ask if there's anyone here today that, that doesn't know that covenant love, that doesn't know that enduring love that is still searching for peace and wholeness. Lord, may they know that it can only be found in your son Jesus. Lord, would you speak to that heart right now. And Lord, for believers, I pray that we would be bold in giving thanks. Lord, that we would be willing to stand up and say hallelujah. Lord, that we would not be ashamed to give you thanks for all of creation, for deliverance, and for walking with us day by day. Use this time, Father, right now to speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Be still, my soul. The Lord is on thy side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. Leave to thy God to order and provide. In every change, he faithful will remain. Be still, my soul. 
thy best, thy heavenly friend. Through thorny ways leads to a joyful end. Be still, my soul, thy God doth undertake to guide the future as he has the past. Thy hope, thy confidence, let nothing shake. All now mysterious shall be bright at last be still my soul the waves and winds still know his voice who ruled them while he dwelt below in you i rest in you i found my hope in you i trust my soul the hour is hastening on when we shall be forever with the Lord when disappointment grief and fear are gone sorrow for God love's purest joys restored still my soul when chains and tears are past all safe and blessed we shall meet at last in you i rest in you i found my hope in you i trust you never your hands alone be still my soul be still my soul be still my Well, you're already standing, so why, you want to practice hallelujah? I want to do that. Okay, that, that, was, that was okay. But like, you're not going to startle anybody at the table when you say it like that. So go ahead. You're standing, so your lungs are ready. Let it out. Just one good hallelujah. You'll feel better right now. Hallelujah. Now, I know y'all feel better for doing that. Amen? Amen. Don't just love our church. I love the way that God's working. I hope that you'll be praying. We've got lots of people traveling uh, this week, so be praying for them. Look forward to seeing you again next Sunday. How do we close? Jesus loves me. Let's sing it. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. 
Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? Friday's disappointment, is Sunday's empty too. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise, make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. In a castle fire, stirring something new. You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon. Resurrection power runs in my veins too. I believe there's another miracle here in this room. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out, I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. My God is able save and deliver and heal and restore anything that he wants to just as the man who was thrown on the bones of elijah if there's anything that he can't do just as the stone that was rolled at the tomb in the garden what happens when god says to move i feel him moving it now i feel him doing it now i feel him doing it now do it now do it now this is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise, make a dead man walk again. Yeah, open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. <laughs> 